So now in this part of the training, we're going to introduce centrifugal pump performance curve. So we're going to see what they are made of. And then we're going to discuss what is the head and why such pump performance curve have been built using head rather than pressure. So on this curve, we can see a centrifugal pump performance curve. And so this type of curve is published by the pump manufacturer. So on such curve, what you will find is on the X axis, you will find the flow rates. And then you have three different curves. The most important one is that one in blue over there. And so it relates to the Y axis over there and shows the evolution of the heads with the liquid rates. Now, the next curve that you have is the one in red and it shows the evolution of the power in horsepower so it's showed on this axis over there so it shows the evolution of the power with the liquid rates and the last curve that we have is the pump efficiency that we see in black over there and so what we can see is that the efficiency reach a maximum point at a certain liquid rate. This type of curve is valid for one specific pump model. So in the example that I've chosen, it is a curve valid for the pump AN900. These curves, they are built experimentally in specific condition as per the API recommended practice 11S2. And so based on that API standards, they are built using one single stage pump. So we can see that it is indicated over there, curve computed for one stage. They are built at a rotational speed of 60 Hertz. So that's what we can see over there. So 60 Hertz, which correspond to 3500 RPM, so rotation per minute. And they are built while flowing fresh water, so a liquid with a specific gravity equal to 1, and this is indicated over there in fluid of 1 SG. Now, as mentioned, the most important curve shows the heads versus the flow rates. So now the next question is, what is heads? And so heads correspond to the height of fluids that balances with the difference between the pump discharge pressure and the pump intake pressure. So another way to say it is that it corresponds to the height of fluids that balances with the pressure which is added by the pump to the fluids. And we could consider that this is more or less equal to the height to which the pump will lift the fluid. So how do we calculate the heads? So you have two formulas that I've written over there, one for the metric system and one for the imperial system. So in the metric system, the head will be expressed in meters and in that case it is equal to a hundred times the difference between the discharge pressure and the pump intake pressure divided by the specific gravity multiplied by the acceleration due to gravity. In the imperial system the formula is slightly different so you will get the head expressed in feet the pressure they will be expressed in PSI. And so in that case, you have this constant of 2.31 multiplied by the difference between the discharge and the intake pressure divided by the specific gravity of the pumped fluid. Now let's practice a little bit. And so I prepared a small exercise for you and I would like you to calculate the head in feet when the pump discharge pressure is equal to 3,350 PSI. The pump intake pressure is equal to 300 and 30 psi and the pumped fluid specific gravity is equal to 0.92. So for that question I would like you to use the imperial system formula. Now I have a second question there where I would like you to use the metric system formula and so in that case I want you to calculate the head in meters when the pump discharge pressure is equal to 220 bars, the pump intake pressure is equal to 20 bars and the pumped fluid specific gravity is equal to 0.95. So as usual, I let you put your answer in the quiz that follows and then you can watch the video with the answers.